I'd like to welcome all of you to this first uh, Indo-Maldivian webinar. We are going to use technology to be able to reach you. All of you here are parents of children with autism. And the purpose of this webinar is one simple thing only. Your whole life, you have been told by various doctors that nothing can be done for autism. And I'm here to tell you that that's no longer true. You were told that there is no medicine, no drugs, only rehabilitation. And I'm here to shift you from a state of hopelessness to one of hope. Because today, modern medicine, research, biotechnology has come together to be able to give our children with autism a new hope. So I'm going to talk about recent advances in the management of autism. Uh, whenever I give a lecture, I like to, you know, if you look at the picture on the screen, you will see a picture of Lord Buddha in the background. And uh, you will notice that, uh, so this is the picture. Uh, I, I saw this painting in a hospital in Taiwan, <coughs> which was run by Buddhist monks. Uh, and in this hospital, this big painting shows Lord Buddha actually going to a forest and healing somebody uh, who is hurt and injured. And the philosophy in this hospital was that the physician, the doctor, has to go out to the patient and help the patient, help the patient to heal. So that is the reason. So I, I like this picture because it shows that it is the responsibility of the physician to go out to those who need healing. This hospital is a unique hospital. Normally, when you go to a hospital, you have to go to one doctor, another doctor, go for this test, etc. But this is the only hospital in the world where the patient comes to one place and everybody comes to the patient. The doctor comes to you. The people for the test come to you. So uh, it's a unique hospital. And I think this picture symbolizes our talk that we are going to reach out to you and uh, tell you how to assist you in healing our children. So again, I extend a warm uh, hand of friendship from our country, India, to the Maldives. So uh, we all know what autism is, but let's look at it from a medical point of view. So autism is considered to be a neurodevelopmental disorder. It was first described in 1943. And normally, the diagnosis happens in the first three years of life. Uh, it is graded either as mild, moderate, or severe. And boys have it four times <coughs> more than girls. So the main problems in autism are basically those of poor social interaction, uh, problems with communication, and repetitive behavior. So these three things, this is a triad that results in autism. Because of this, our children are hyperactive, and you've seen that in your children. They have pro they have lack of speech. Uh, there's inappropriate laughing, crying. They are attached to strange objects. They, they don't understand what is dangerous. Uh, they have various sensory issues, and they can't relate to children. So these are the problems that, are, that happen in autism. You're all familiar with this. So let's look at a few of the symptoms. So this is hyperactivity in a child. You can see a child who is jumping, hyperactive, <clears throat> for no reason, uh, for and in an uncontrolled fashion, you have these symptoms. These children uh, have poor eye contact. As you can see in this child, they don't make eye contact. And they have poor social skills. <coughs> I need to sort this out. This uh, there's repetitive behavior. So you can see here, they keep repeating the same behavior again and again. Uh, 
they have sensory issues, auditory issues. They like to put things in their mouth. So these are all sensory uh, issues that these children have. Sometimes their behavior is aggressive. And this is not their fault. They are not in control of, of what they do. They just get aggressive for no reason whatsoever. And sometimes they can even hurt themselves. They bite themselves. They hit themselves. And they're just attached sometimes to strange objects. And then they just want those objects. So, you know, uh, this slide is just to show you that the incidence of autism is huge across the world, across all the continents. So whether it is Asia or, or, or Europe or America or Australia, you have a relatively high incidence of autism. But what is surprising is the way autism is increasing. So if you see, uh, this is figures from America. And you can see that in 2004, the incidence of autism was 1 in 166 children. But in 2014, it became 1 in 68. That is a three times increase, a three time increase in the incidence of autism, which is huge. Never before in the history of medicine has there been such a dramatic increase in the incidence of any childhood condition of any neurodevelopmental condition. And although these are figures from America, it is true for uh, children across the world. So this is something that is very worrying. And this is something that does need our attention. So uh, in this movie, uh, this is a movie from a, a Hollywood film called The Accountant. And I show this clip because it very beautifully describes uh, how we need to change our thinking about children with autism. In the movie, he says a beautiful sentence. He says, our children are not less than. They are different. I'm going to repeat. Our children with autism are not less than. They are different. So we need to first change our own thinking and accept that our children are not less than any other child. They are wonderful children, but they are different. They have some problems and we have to help them fix those problems. It is very important that we change our own thinking, our own approach towards our children. Because when we look at them that, you know, uh, with, with different eyes, they start seeing themselves differently. So this is why I show this clip. So one question which as parents you will keep asking yourself, why did my child have autism? And uh, you know, this is a question every parent asks, why my child? Okay, there's so many children out there who are apparently normal. But this is a, a question to which we may not 
in your particular case have an answer but we will roughly look at all the possible causes of autism so autism can either be a genetic which is very very less but mainly it is environmental so we have seen twins and we have seen triplets have it which shows the genetic base but there are various environmental factors that can also cause autism these can include problems during the time of birth problems in the intestine exposure to certain toxic chemicals and radiation from mobile phones so let us look at the prenatal causes and we have seen that the mother's health here is very important so if the mother has any infection or if the mother has diabetes and if the mother has any emotional issues so it suppose uh, the mother has depression or has any anxiety or any other emotional issues there is a greater chance that the child will have autism and there is a lot of research to actually show this what this basically says is that the mother's physical and emotional people focus only on the physical the mother's emotional health is also very important what is happening today is very often mothers also have to work so they have to manage home they have to manage the other children they have to manage uh, you know um, the you know the pregnancy uh, so in this there is a lot of stress and when mothers are emotionally stressed during pregnancy it releases certain chemicals in the body these chemicals go directly to the child's brain and they can predispose to um, autism so the mother's physical health and emotional health is extremely important also uh, the age of the father and any problems or complications during the birth process so suppose there has been a delayed birth or the child has not cried or lack of oxygen during the birth process there can be autism uh, research shows that when the father is older there is a greater chance of autism so a, per, a person who is uh, has a son at the age of 45 years is three and a half times more likely to have autism than somebody at 24 years so and nowadays again you see the trend because nowadays people are marrying late they are having children late because of work pressures and professional pressures so this is also not good it's important to finish child bearing a little earlier uh, now there is a strong connection between what is happening in the intestines and autism so we have seen that 9 out of 10 children can you imagine that 9 out of 10 children with autism actually have a problem with their intestines now in our intestines all of us you and me and all of us we have good bacteria and we have bad bacteria and these bacteria balance themselves out what has been found in children with autism is there is a imbalance so the bad bacteria are more than the good bacteria so the question is how does this happen and there are many causes for this for example you know earlier it was a rule even medically it is advised that all mothers should breastfeed only for 6 months so 6 months no other feed pure breastfeeding because the child's intestine is not designed to be able to uh, you know digest uh, outside food but today what is happening do most mothers don't only breastfeed by the time the third or fourth month is over they start adding outside feed powdered milk uh, other liquids and juices so the 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 intestine of the child is being made to take the pressure that it is not yet developed to take so simple things like breastfeeding for the first 6 months is uh, very important also as our children become grow when they become 1 year 2 years we start giving them nowadays uh, children very early on start you know having junk food uh you know various chips and stuff that you get from stores and uh, you know cokes and uh, you know um, uh, aerated drinks all of these have a you know in a in a new in a one to year old child have a negative effect and they can actually change the balance of good bacteria and bad bacteria so food that we give the food that the mother has during pregnancy the food uh, breastfeeding the child and the food given in the first one to years also has a important role to play now this is something most people are not aware of that are mobile phones see the thing is you know most mobile phones have uh, they emit radiation and of course this radiation is there for a short distance only now um, so when you're uh, talking a lot uh, the radiation affects you but when you're whatsapping see a mother who's sitting and whatsapping uh, now this radiation goes directly to the uh, to the to the brain of the developing child so it is actually been seen 
that there is ever since mobile phones came into existence, there has been a huge spurt in the incidence of autism. So there is one simple message if you can pass on to all our daughters and sisters who are going to have children is during pregnancy uh, not to keep the mobile phone close. You can keep, use the mobile phone from a distance. You can use Bluetooth. You can use uh, hands free because the radiation travels a very short distance. But when it is in your bag and if the phone rings, it directly affects the child. When you're holding it close to what's happening, it directly affects the child. So this is one important message which you can please pass on to any mother who's going to have a child that during pregnancy to keep the mobile phone at a distance. I'm not saying don't use it. I'm saying keep it at a distance and use it. Uh, we have actually research has shown how this affects because what happens, uh, our brain has got a protection system called the blood brain barrier. This is like a security guard, which only the brain has. So the other organs like the liver, heart, muscles, they don't have a security guard. So whatever comes in our blood goes directly into the heart, goes directly into the lungs, directly into the kidneys. But in the brain, there is a blood brain barrier and there's a security guard which decides what will come in and what will go out. So uh, it keeps the harmful things away. So nature realized that the brain is a very protected area. But mobile phone radiation, it, it affects the blood brain barrier. <coughs> so basically, it removes the security guard. And once the security guard is removed, now things which otherwise would not have gone inside, go inside and they damage the developing brain of the child when the child is still in the mother's womb. There are certain heavy metals associated. For example, it has been seen that lead, a large number of our children with autism have high levels of lead. And lead again comes through various, or it comes to us from our food and from our water. So, for example, in India, one of the most popular brands of noodles, which 90% of the children were having, was found to have very high levels of lead. And this had become a huge, big story in India, and that company had to withdraw its products. So, again, lead comes from all the fast food, processed food, junk food that we eat. So, when this is given earlier, this can also have an effect. Then mercury. And uh, we found high levels of mercury sometimes in these children. Also, aluminium can, um, you know, in the body can cause autism. Uh, th there is a, there's a little controversial area where the vaccines cause autism. So, a lot of people believe that vaccines do cause autism. Uh, and in 1998, there was a paper by uh, somebody called Wakefield who actually showed that the preservatives used in the vaccine were causing autism. But uh, they were, but this was criticized a lot because they found the paper not to be very scientific. And later there were uh, 25 other papers which showed that autism is does not have a connection to the uh, MMR vaccine, which was supposed to be the cause. Uh, so medically, uh, we don't say ever that vaccines cause autism because then parents stop giving vaccines and stopping to give vaccines is very dangerous. So it is very important that you continue to vaccinate the children. What I can say in conclusion is that the risk of not vaccinating is much higher than the risk of vaccinating. Now, uh, in the last uh, few years, we have a much better understanding of why autism happens. So we know various factors in the environment, problems with the immune system, our hormones, various chemicals in the body, various uh, stress factors, inflammation, what, what it does that causes autism. So we have a much better understanding of the causes of autism. Now, this is our own research. And this is research done for the very first time in the world. Nobody had done this research before. Nobody had looked into the brains of the children with autism and try to identify what are the areas that are damaged. But we at Neurogen actually did that over several years. Now, this scan is a color scan. It's called a PET CD scan, positron emission tomography. In this, the blue areas that you see, uh, these are hypermetabolic areas or they are areas that are weaker. They are areas that are working less. And they are areas which would be, say, functionally partly damaged, functionally. So uh, we have actually found, uh, uh, and we have done this now in more than 1,400 uh, children. Uh, we have seen that every child with autism had this blue area in the brain. And uh, we also studied some normal children and a few normal children, and not a single normal child had this. So my dear friends, for the first time ever, we now know why our child does not have speech, because the speech area is affected. 
we know why our child is hyperactive we know why our child does not make social contact we know why our child child cannot learn because there is a part of their brain that is damaged so it is not our child's fault his brain is partly not working it's just like suppose a child has a fracture of the leg will that child be able to walk will that child be able to run no so just like now there's nothing it's not the fault of the child if he has a fracture he cannot run but in autism when our child has a brain damage we think there is a problem with the child no our child is normal there is just this part of the brain which is not working so i'm going to show you a little bit more about that and uh, this what i'm talking about we have published it in a medical paper in the world journal of nuclear medicine that what is the baseline pattern and age related development in children on pet this is a paper which is written by us which for the very first time actually showed clearly what the problem is in the brains of children with autism now here's something interesting uh, this is a graph this is our own research suv is a value of brain function so the higher the value the better it is so this is the value of brain function and this is the age so 0 5 10 15 now this blue is how a, a normal child develops so you can see that from 3 years to 5 to 10 the brain activity keeps on increasing this is in normal children but in children with autism just look it's the exact opposite it actually keeps on going down so between 3 and 5 it's here and 10 is here and 15 it's here so the brain functioning in children with autism keeps on progressively decreasing as compared to a normal child where it keeps on increasing this was startling finding because we were very we ourselves were a little uh, amazed and shocked when we saw this from our research now what does this mean <clears throat> what does it mean to you it's very important see suppose i what what do we want we want our children's brains to work like normal brains right that's what we want so this is normal our ch child's brain is going like this so suppose i treat the child at 5 years i have to only bridge this gap i have to only go from here to here but if i treat the child at 15 years i have to go from here to here so this is the concept of early intervention that we should treat our children early because the earlier we treat the better the less gap we have to bridge the later we treat the bigger gap we have to bridge so uh, this slide is a very important slide to tell us that we need to treat our children early if we wait late we have to bridge a much bigger gap so um, now the last 10 years things have changed earlier it was thought that just one thing will help in autism just occupational therapy or just aba or just speech therapy but now we believe it's going to be multiple things many things put together so from applied behavioral analysis art based therapies occupational physio speech therapy chelation diet neurofeedback uh, hyperbaric oxygen biomedical so all these therapies are going to work together so stem cell therapy which i'm going to talk about is part of an overall treatment if we now each all the children don't need this but some children may need five or six of these some may need seven eight of these some may need two three of these so we have to design our treatment specifically for each child okay and that is important for that we need to be in a multidisciplinary hospital where all this is available where we can choose the best combine the best and help our children and i'm going to show you how so we all know about aba uh, the whole pr principle of aba is because our children have a problem with their behavior but with every behavior there is something that precedes the behavior and there is a consequence of the behavior okay so if you modulate what precedes it and if you modulate what follows it you can change the behavior so this is the concept of applied behavioral analysis then we have occupational therapy earlier occupational therapy was done only in hospitals but now we believe that it should be done in schools and even it should be done at home uh the various aspects of occupational therapy are you know activities of daily living that's the most important thing in ot now there's a new concept of sensory integration 
then there are various other things like play therapy, social skills, cognitive behavioral therapy, school based therapies, recreational, etc. So, occupational therapy is very holistic, it's got multiple aspects to it. Um, now, there is this new treatment called sensory integration therapy, uh, where which uh, has a very useful role to play in help with children with sensory issues. So, this is what an SI room looks like. This is in our institute, in our hospital. Uh, everything here from the flooring to the things on the side, everything is specifically designed uh, around children with autism. Uh, then there is speech therapy. Now, the older thinking was that we just have to focus on talking. But the newer thinking is more than talking, it is communication. And communication is holistic. It includes talking, but it includes many other aspects also. So the shift is from talking to uh, you know, communicating. So uh, this is the other thing that we have found because up to now, it was believed that children with autism had no physical problems. The problem was only in the mind. But that's not true. We have actually found that these children have coordination problems. They have a clumsiness that the tone of their body is sometimes different. Their gait they have uh, is different. There are problems with their posture and joint. So we have, we have now realized that there is an important role of physiotherapy uh, in, um, in, uh, in your children treated with autism. Then there is something new that we have done, and that is aquatic therapy. So we found aquatic therapy to be very, very useful in children with autism. And this is something not being practiced. But, but trust me, our experience shows us brilliant results with aquatic therapy. Now, aquatic, what is aquatic therapy? Aquatic therapy is not swimming. It is rehabilitation in water. It is physiotherapy and occupational therapy in water because then the properties of the water, both the physical and chemical properties, they help in the children doing things which they would not do outside. So we found some aquatic therapy to be very, very useful. And uh, uh, in fact, when we visited uh, uh, the uh, autism center um, in, um, uh, at, in Maldives some time ago, I was very happy in the building to see a, a pool. There was actually a swimming pool there. And I was very, very happy that while making the uh, center, um, you know, uh, one had thought of aquatic therapy already. So I think that is a very uh, forward thinking uh, move. Now, uh, the, what are the benefits of aquatic therapy? So it helps in uh, posture and sensory issues, cognitive issues, attention, concentration, various other things. But in particular, it improves the uh, sleep pattern. So uh, there are various issues that we have noticed by giving therapy in water. Uh, then they have art-based therapies and we have uh, these are different types of art-based therapies that we have. There is music therapy, there is drama therapy. Uh, then we come to diet and this is something all of you may have heard of or even practiced. Uh, basically, uh, uh, there are foods to avoid and there are foods to eat. So what do we avoid? We avoid anything that has sugar in it, that has additives, pesticides, anything that's genetically modified, uh, anything that's inorganic and processed, and anything that's hard to digest, you know. So these are foods to avoid. And what should we eat? We should eat, uh, we should give our children probiotics, prebiotics, um, give them a ketogenic diet, uh, work on gluten-free and calcium-free uh, food. Uh, vitamin rich food, uh, some people have said camel milk works, then there's curcumin, fermented food. So uh, we're all familiar with this, but it's very, very important because we have seen uh, over the last few years that uh, I'm sorry. So uh, just this giving our children this food and avoiding this itself has a lot of very, very beneficial effects. Uh, so uh, just to tell you what a ketogenic diet is. So basically it is high fat, just enough proteins and a low carbohydrate diet. So this is what ketogenic diet is and we have found it to be very, very useful. Uh, now here's something new that is called hyperbaric oxygen. Uh, so this is a chamber in which oxygen is given at a little higher pressure. And we are actually increasingly finding that uh, hyperbaric oxygen has a lot of benefits. It has certain adverse events too. But we now believe and are soon going to be starting combining hyperbaric oxygen with stem cell therapy. Because we uh, now have our, our research over the last several years has shown that together 
uh, they have a little better benefit. So this is basically a chamber. The child just lies down. The mother can be with the child. The mother and child can easily fit in there. You just lie down. You could be reading a book. You could be listening to music. And uh, in the chamber, there is high oxygen that goes into your system and you just come out and um, it's very, very useful. But uh, with all, are we doing enough? You know, despite all this, are we doing enough? So despite all this, uh, our children still remain symptomatic. So the old thinking was that once the central nervous system is damaged, it cannot regenerate. This was an old thinking. But this is the thinking that most of your doctors still believe. Not yours, all doctors all over the world. They believe that once the nervous system is damaged, nothing can be done. But my dear friends, I am here taking this webinar to tell you that this is no longer true. That the new thinking is that you can regenerate uh, the damaged brain through cellular replacement and repair. So here's the good news. We, that damage I showed you, that blue on the autism, we can now fix it. And I'm going to tell you how and I'm going to show you the results. So now we have a new ray of hope. Finally, God has listened to your prayers. Finally, you know, because that's what you did when you were told that nothing else can be done for your children. You prayed. But the Almighty, Allah, God, whatever you might call him, the higher power has finally answered us and given us a new ray of hope. And that new ray of hope is called stem cell therapy. And I like to call this an idea whose time has come. So there have been revolutionary developments for mankind. Like, you know, there was life before without electricity and then there's life with electricity. There was the local, there was the train, the car, the radio, TV. In recent times, there was life before the internet and after the internet. There was a mobile, you know, there was a time when there were no mobile phones and now we can't live without them. So these things have changed mankind and stem cell therapy is one such change. So what exactly are stem cells? So... So uh, that was a video of uh, one of our greatest scientists, Stephen Hawking. He died a few months ago. Uh, well, after Einstein, he's considered to be the greatest scientist we ever had. And you heard what he said. I'll repeat his statement. We are on the brink of a new era in the field of medicine. A time when we will to heal our bodies from using cells within us. And these cells are called stem cells. So the world's greatest scientist, okay, actually is talking about stem cells. In fact, he did a 10-part series for a US channel on stem cells. So stems, what exactly are stem cells? So stem cells are cells which have the ability to repair, to replace, and to regenerate. So whenever anything is damaged, what do we need to do? We need to repair it. We need to replace the damaged cells. We need to regenerate. So I don't know if you can see this slide clearly, but uh, this is what a stem cell looks like, small. And we actually grew these stem cells in the laboratory. Before we started treating patients, we did a lot. I, I devoted 10 years of my life to research in the laboratory before I did my first patient. So I've given a big chunk of my life to researching this. So we first showed that this stem cell can be converted into this. Can you see this? Within two months, we converted this into nerve cells. So we now know that a stem cell can become a nerve cell. The word stem <coughs> comes from the stem of a tree. And just like the stem of a tree gives rise to branches, leaves, flowers, and fruits, there are some cells which can give rise to any cell in the body. They can give rise to brain, heart, muscle, or blood. Those cells which can become any cell of the body, they are called stem cells. 
So stem cells, the word stem comes from the stem of a tree. And a stem cell is a cell which can become any cell of the body. So how do they work? First, they multiply. So if I have a single stem cell, I can make a million stem cells from it. Right. So that's one amazing ability. Our normal cells in our body, they can't multiply. If I take a hair cell, I cannot make it grow. But stem cells, you can make them grow. That is the first property. Second, they convert into other cell types. So if I have a single stem cell, I can make it into a brain. I can make it into heart. I can make it into fat. I can muscle. So the same cell can become any tissue of the body. So that's the second property. They convert into other cell types. Third is that these cells release certain positive chemicals. And these positive chemicals have a very healing effect on the entire body. So these, these cells are called growth factors. And one particular one called BDNF, Brain Derived Nerve Growth Factor, we find it to be very important in helping children with autism. They also improve the blood supply. So if you see, this is less blood supply. When stem cells reach the brain, they get fresh blood to come towards it. And when fresh blood comes, it helps in, um, you know, uh, in the healing process. So this ability by which fresh blood supply of blood vessels come, it's called angiogenesis. This is a particular property of stem cells. So uh, this is a, a medical slide which actually shows everything I've said that what are the different ways in which stem cells actually help. So uh, they also release certain small vesicles in the brain called exosomes. They trans differentiate, they become nerve cells. So they're various, they prevent death and there are various ways in which these cells help. So um, this is just again a list. This is a med technical list that they replace the damaged cells directly. They protect the cells, they increase their survival, they improve the connection between cells and they decrease scarring. So what exactly is this field of stem cell therapy? Basically, stem cell therapy is you use a good cell, a healthy cell to replace a damaged cell. That's it. Something is damaged. We take something good and put it there and that thing heals. So, for example, in this, this is a scan that shows the damage in autism. And when we give stem cells, the damage will go away. Now, there are different types of stem cells and it is important to understand that. Uh, the first type of stem cell is from the embryo. This is called embryonic stem cell. Uh, now, you know, when we start life on the... Life starts when the father's sperm and the mother's egg comes together. When it comes together, it becomes one. This one becomes two, four, and they keep on multiplying. And on the fifth day of life, uh, this has become a small bundle called a blastocyst. Now, this blastocyst is a bundle of stem cells. They are called embryonic stem cells, which means all of us, all of you sitting in that room and me and everybody here, on the fifth day of life, we all were a bundle of stem cells in our mother's womb. So we all have started life as a small bundle of stem cells. And from this bundle of stem cells, the whole body was formed. So if this was removed and taken to the laboratory, you could make it grow and convert. Because see, from these cells, the brain was formed, our skin, our bone, our heart, our lung, our kidney, every a whole body in nine months was made from this. What does it mean? It means that these cells can become any other cell. Now, uh, but these embryonic stem cells, they have a problem. They are the most powerful, but they also have certain ethical issues. Uh, some religious communities don't believe we should use the embryo. They are also potentially dangerous. Uh, some, you know, they say they could form tumors, etc. So we do not use embryonic stem cells. I'm going to repeat this. I'm going to repeat it three times. We do not use embryonic stem cells. We do not use embryonic stem cells. We use nothing from the embryo. So why am I emphasizing this? Because, you know, when you talk to your doctors or when you go, when you Google, you sometimes read negative things about stem cells. Whatever is negative about stem cells is about embryonic stem cells only. And we don't use embryonic stem cells. The second stem cells is from the umbilical cord. The umbilical cord is the cord that connects the mother and baby at birth. Now, uh, this cord is rich with stem cells. Uh, earlier, this was just thrown away. But nowadays it is being collected and saved. And if you have saved the umbilical cord of your child, 
then uh, umbilical cord cells from there could possibly be used uh, to uh, to help but we don't use this either what we use is adult stem cells so we uh, now in all our bodies in yours all of you sitting here in our children uh, in me uh, in our bone we have something called bone marrow it's a liquid where our body's blood is produced and to make new blood the body needs stem cells so inside the bone there are millions of stem cells millions what are they doing there they are making blood okay but if i put a needle into the bone and take out a little bit of bone marrow from this bone marrow now i can remove the stem cells and this stem cells i can make whatever i want i can make it into a brain into a heart into a muscle into whatever i want so we use adult stem cells only we do not use it, uh, embryonic or umbilical and the last type is something called induced pluripotent stem cell this is a combination of the two the outside is adult the inside is embryonic but this is only in the research stage it's not being used <clears throat> now why have i spent so much time explaining this because we need to know that the dangers of this cannot be implied to the dangers of this and if you say this is dangerous so this is also dangerous it is like saying that the dangers of alcohol are the same as the dangers of homemade orange juice that's not true right you can't say that this is a drink this is a drink so because alcohol is dangerous homemade orange juice can also be dangerous does that make sense it doesn't make any sense but somehow people believe that so this is embryonic stem cells alcohol powerful but dangerous what we are using is cells from our own child's body nothing from the outside it's like homemade orange juice so we work with adult stem cells because like i said they're very safe they they don't form tumors they don't get rejected because if you use other cells from somebody else they can get rejected you can easily get them from a needle prick and uh, there are no ethical issues about its use so what's the scientific base of stem cell therapy you all may have heard of something called the nobel prize it's the highest prize given in medicine it's a recognition of the highest level of work and three times in 15 years in 2012 in 2007 and 1990 stem cell therapy got the nobel prize in fact uh, what we are doing uh, taking stem cells from the bone marrow was given the nobel prize in 1990 so this is the work that we are doing Uh, also this book uh, is called Harrison's principle of internal medicine uh, this is like our bible quran or gita and medicine this is a standard textbook everybody reads it and this has now a chapter on stem cell therapy and mentions many neurological conditions and what's the scientific basis of the work that we do so all our work is published in international journals so you can see that we have published 86 scientific articles now what is the meaning of this so in the medical community what we do is valid only if it is published in scientific journals so uh, because when something goes to a scientific journal the the editor the editorial board and uh, three independent reviewers they evaluate the data they verify its authenticity they check its ethical and scientific base only then they publish so how do you know what i'm saying is the truth i could be talking anything okay so people can put up anything on google or on uh, on their website but when your work is published it means somebody outside of me and medically we call it peer review has studied my data has authenticated it and then has published in this these are not magazines these are scientific journals which are read by doctors so we don't have one or two we have 86 scientific papers which is the largest in the world for neurological disorders there is no hospital in the world which has published more than 80 papers on stem cell therapy in neurological disorders so all our work is published in international journals there are also now several books like this book on cerebral palsy this has when they wanted to they introduced a chapter on stem cell therapy and they asked us to write it so you can see we have written this chapter uh, in this book on physical disabilities uh they introduced a chapter stem cell therapy in pediatric neurological disabilities again they asked us to write it so we in this book on muscular dystrophy again we wrote the chapter in this another book on muscular dystrophy we wrote the chapter uh at the, in india the government of india at its highest levels is we've been very supportive of stem cell therapy you can see our president's speech in the joint session of parliament where in the section of research uh, they said that in these five areas 
the, will be the focus nanotechnology material science thorium research brain research and stem cells so in this they will build world class research institutes so the government of india puts in the five top areas of research our prime minister honorable shri narendra modi has been a very big supporter of stem cell therapy so uh, if you see that when he went to japan he actually visited uh, uh, professor yamanaka who won the nobel prize in medicine it's not very often that prime ministers and presidents visit a stem cell research institute but he actually did that he visited the stem cell lab and in india too this is him in bangalore he visited the stem cell uh, research facility so he is somebody who likes to or who actually believes in this uh, and i'm very fortunate we are very very fortunate that in a book which i have written uh, which is translated into uh, one of our local languages uh, our current prime minister honorable shri narendra modi has written an introduction so it is not often that somebody uh, at the level of shri narendra modi would write a message or an introduction for a medical book and yet in a book which i have written uh, we have his introduction so i showed you a speech to show that our prime minister in parliament that's the lok sabha the indian parliament is actually talking about stem cell therapy it's very rare to have people at that level talk about a medical subject but the honorable prime minister is talking about the importance of stem cell therapy in parliament here there's a message from a health minister as you can see he's talking of stem cell therapy and he says with this the children with autism and cerebral palsy can be integrated back into mainstream society so a health minister in this message to our conference that we had actually mentioned this now let's look at how this treatment is done so the beauty of this treatment is it's very very simple okay there are three steps in the first step what we do is we put a needle into the bone just above the hip bone so this is the hip bone above this is the pelvic bone and we put a needle into that uh, this is a real picture i'll show you a video and when we put the needle and with the syringe we pull out the liquid inside the bone comes out and this liquid is called bone marrow this takes about 20 minutes and once we have taken this then we send the child back to the room then over the next 4 to 5 hours the bone marrow which we have taken we run it through various machines like centrifuges and we separate the stem cells from the other cells all right and once we have the stem cells then with a very thin needle we inject it into the lower spine why the lower spine because there's a fluid in the lower spine which will take it directly to the brain so in 20 minutes we aspirate the bone marrow in 4 to 5 others we separate the stem cells and in another 20 minutes we inject the stem cells back so you can see this see this is the bone marrow aspirate you can see this is the bone marrow we take it to the laboratory uh, this is a machine is called a centrifuge uh, these are microscopes this is a cell counter which counts the number of cells so we have very sophisticated machines that identify the cells and then through this is the stem cells so a very thin needle we inject it into the lower back and the fluid in the lower back takes it to the brain so we'll just see this again all right so you can uh, see that's the bone marrow aspiration that the child is sleeping we take the bone marrow to the laboratory goes through centrifuges we check it through microscopes machines count it and once the cells are ready through a very thin needle we inject it in the back that means in this whole process there are only two needle pricks with one needle prick we take out bone marrow 
with one we injected back and we are taking the child's own cells from an area where there are extra to an area where they are required so this again to show you how we take out the bone marrow we take it to the laboratory and then through this very thin needle we inject it why do we inject it here because there's a fluid here which goes straight to the brain so if i inject it here the fluid will now carry it to the brain itself so that's what we do we just inject it here it's very very safe process now what are our clinical results all of you want to know now i'm sure you all want to know so all this is fine we know now what are stem cells how will it benefit my child so now let's come to the main part of the interesting story that you've been waiting for now this is our overall results first i'll show you our overall results so we have so far now treated almost twice this we have treated over 1400 patients but this is data from 700 patients because uh, when we present this data we have to wait for one year to you know and then we present that data so it shows that 89% of our children have improved that's a lot almost 90% have shown an improvement out of which 33% have had a significant improvement and do you know what the meaning of significant improvement is it means they no more have autism their autism is gone 33% of the children my dear friends lose their diagnosis they no more have autism right there is no other treatment in the world which results in autism disappearing there is no other treatment but with stem cell therapy at least in 33% of our patients we make autism go away in 29% of the patients there are moderate improvements this is a group where the children become independent they don't need special care but they still are not outside the spectrum they still have a few symptoms of autism in 25% there is a mild improvement which means they have some improvements but are still dependent and still need special care and about 10% of our patients do not improve all right so 90% improve 10% don't and 33% diagnosis goes away now there's something interesting we found here we found that almost all these children in the 33% that were that became neurotypical or near normal were all below 12 years of age they were all before puberty you know what is puberty it's a time when a boy becomes a man when he starts getting a mustache uh, growing hair the sexual organs increase if we do the treatment before that we have found that the results are excellent we have almost a one to third of the patients uh so this is below 12 all these uh, mild and moderate are between 12 and 20 and the 10% who did not improve were all over 20 so all the children who came to us late did not improve they are the 10% that did not improve all those that came to us early had fantastic improvements so now why is this important now remember the graph i showed you i showed you how the autism you know the brain development keeps going down and the normal child goes up so when you treat early the, you have to bridge a small gap so you are in this group if you come late the results come down so the sooner we treat our children the better it is for them let me explain this let's say i treat your child today it doesn't matter what the age is and i can give you a certain amount of improvement but if you come to me after two or three years the improvement will be lesser which means the longer we wait the lesser result we'll get that is why it is important to give our children the best possible opportunity right now that is available and our results actually show that now if you see the symptoms there are different symptoms that improve so uh uh unfortunately the slide i don't know it's not is it coming through there and start coming through so these are the various symptoms of hyperactivity speech uh, attention eye contact and you can see the percentage of improvement uh, in each of these symptoms now uh we are i'm a medical doctor i'm a neurosurgeon i'm a professor and for me to make a claim that stem cell therapy works for autism i have to be very very careful because you can't just go and make a statement like that when 99% of the doctors are saying autism cannot be cured 
how can I, what gives me the right to say that autism can be treated and almost cured? Two things. One, my results must be statistically significant. And I'll show you what it means. That means by a mathematical calculation, if you compare the patient before and if you compare the patient after, the, the difference should be statistically significant. That's the first. And we showed that. Second, there must be objective improvements on brain imaging. So I should be able to show you a before and after scan and show you that the damage is gone. So I'm going to show you both. Only if I say this, can I say that this treatment works. So uh, this is a, a smaller sample size of 32 patients. This was in 2014. Uh, we studied average follow-up of the patient was one year. So we studied this patient for almost one year. Now, these are various scores. This is a score called CGI. and This is an Indian score, scale for autism. Now, we took the patients and took their scores before and averaged it. That is, they took the mean score. That is, uh, approximate average it was 4.5, the CGI. And then we took the mean score of all the patients after the treatment. And it was 3. And this, if you do the mathematical calculation, is statistically significant. Same thing on the ISA scale. If you see before and after, you can see a big statistically significant difference. So the average before and the average one year after stem cell therapy, there is a statistical difference. So this is called statistically significant and it's a mathematical calculation. Again, if you see the various things like social relationship, emotional response, speech. Again, if you take the average score before and the average score after, all of these are statistically significant. But here, this is the most important slide I have. Really the most important. So uh, now above what you see is a PET CT scan of a child with autism. You're seeing it at three different angles. This is a horizontal picture. This is a vertical picture. This is a lateral picture. But you're seeing the same thing, this damage in different angles. Now, this, as we have shown you, is the cause and of the root of all the problems with children with autism. This is before the stem cell therapy. Now, look at the row below. Six months after stem cell therapy, you can see this blue is almost gone. This blue is almost gone. This blue is significantly reduced. So, for the first time in medical history, yes, my dear friends, for the first time, time in medical history in the world we have shown that the damage in the children of brains with autism can be reversed so you can see before and after you can actually see the difference and i'm showing you one or two i have more than 1000 scans before and after and they show that the damage before is gone within six months to one year. So autism can be reversed. Whatever you were told before, you have to forget about it. This is objective evidence. Now you see here again, you can see this blue is the damaged part and you can see afterwards, it's gone. Again here, you can see this blue before and afterwards it's gone. So you can actually see the difference before versus after that the stem cell therapy has gone and healed the damaged brain. Now then some people asked us, how do you know this remains? How do you know after a few years it doesn't come back the blue? So in a few patients, we did year after year, 2012, 13, 14. And we saw that the blue keeps on progressively becoming less. See here it is so much, here it is less, here it is still less. So you can actually see the progressive decrease in the damage year after year after year. So it's a constant improvement. So the world's first scientific paper, the world's first scientific paper on the results of stem cell therapy in autism was written by us. The second paper came from China, the third paper from Italy and the fourth from the US. But the world's first paper was written by us. And it was called Autologous Bone Marrow Mononuclear Cell Therapy Fortism, an Open Label Proof of Concept Study in the journal Stem Cell International. 
so this was this has been our contribution to medical science that we showed the world that autism can be treated after that we have published 14 scientific other papers now we just see a few uh, videos uh, now here you have uh, i think uh, when we farm is there this is the sun you can actually see uh, the improvements you can see before how you can solve complex tasks independently how the attention span is improved How is fine motor writing skills earlier? Just see how nicely he can write now as compared to before. Just see, you know, very clear and neat images. Earlier he could just not do it. See, during interactions, his emotional responses are better. So um, that is a child right from your country, from the Maldives. And uh, maybe Madam Ifam will talk to you more about those improvements. Now, this was the first child that we had. First child I treated. Just watch this video. Chatham was my first child, so I was very excited about how he would be. I eagerly looked forward to playing with him. And getting the wrong school life. But when I came to know that my child had a problem, it shocked me and I wondered why did this happen only to me? Why does only my child have a problem? Why is he this way? Children whose behavior was very different from his brother children. For example, normal children walk on the feet, but Shantanu walked on his turn. He has never called me mother or hugged me tight. Earlier he would scratch and bite into his own skin. He would hit our grandmother and use abusive words. It has been two months since Chattanooga's stem cell therapy. There have been many changes and many improvements. His hyperactivity has reduced drastically, and his attention span has improved a lot. He sits patiently in one place. He has started coordinating with his sister very well. He plays with her very affectionately. We are glad we took the decision to give him stem cell therapy. I enjoy playing with him and living with him. My friends have also become fond of him. It feels very nice. It has been six months since the stem cell therapy. Shatter has shown a lot of improvements. His hyperactivity is almost as good as non-existent. His handwriting has become much better. His eye contact has also become better. I have never seen Shatter dancing. But now he takes a keen interest in dancing. He also likes to listen to music. He can now fold clothes. Earlier he was not able to fold even a handkerchief, but now he can easily fold blankets. He helps me in cutting vegetable and in cooking too. Goes to the market store for purchases. He 
passed his 10th grade. There have been improvements in many other aspects as well. For example, this emotional quotient has also increased. Now he hugs us very affectionately, calls me mother. Now he takes tuitions of other special kids. Now, so Shandru was my very first child. I treated him about nine years ago. He was extremely hyperactive, violent. He used to beat up, scratch himself, beat up his sister. It was impossible to manage him. He could not be educated. And today, this child has improved so much that he has passed his 10th school exam. He is now studying in college. And most important, my dear friends, he is taking tuitions for other deaf children. A child who is a special needs child himself is today part of normal education, but he is teaching deaf children. So that is truly a very, very amazing out outcome. So he's normal. He's no autism at all. He's back into normal life from extremely severe autism, uncontrolled, no speech, hyperactive, aggressive, to normal education and being able to treat deaf children. This is the magic of stem cells. This is what stem cells can do. I'm sure you all saw the video of patient Ganesh before this lecture. And he too has improved so much. You know, he is now, uh, you know, from a special school. You, they saw he got the normal school. He's getting high grades in his exams. He's stopping his class, getting the highest GPA. So, uh, Stem cell therapy can shift children from a state of dependency to a state of being independent and back into the normal life stream. So I'll very briefly go through some of the other neurological disorders which can be treated with stem cells. So uh, I'll, I'll just spend a few minutes and I'll go so cerebral palsy. I know most of you are parents of autism, but I'll just run it through. So cerebral palsy is where there is damage to the brain. And that results in stiffness, tightness of the hands and legs and difficulty in movements. Uh, it can affect either one side, both the legs, uh, only the legs, the whole body, the difficulty in walking, uh, balance, gripping, drooling, etc. So here you can see in cerebral palsy, the damage is much more. You can see in autism, it was blue, but here it is almost black and uh, there are various medicines there are various surgeries to help in the tightness but stem cell therapy has amazing results so you can see again we have treated over a thousand patients but this is data of 660 where 20 percent had a significant improvement 41 had a moderate 30 had mild 9 percent did not improve but in cp there is no age correlation and these are the various symptoms that improve from the oromotor balance trunk upper limb lower limb etc so that's the percentage of improvements and this is a scan that's showing you before. You can see the damage before, blue, and afterwards. It's much less. See how much it is before. And afterwards, it's gone. See here, the damage before. And after the stem cell therapy, it is gone. So stem cell therapy can repair this brain damage and give our children a near normal, close to normal brain. So we have published eight scientific papers on this. Uh, I'll just, I uh, won't show you too See, here you can see this child. Before, he cannot sit. He needs three people to support him. If you leave him, he falls down. You see? And now you can see after stem cell, he's sitting by himself. Nobody's supporting him in the back. Now, here you see. Now, just look at him. Trying, struggling to get up. It's impossible. This is before the treatment. You can see he's just struggling to get up on his own. And now, see, just one touch and he gets up on his own. So, amazing improvements. Uh, then muscular dystrophy is a disease where the muscles become weaker. And you can see this at five years, the gray is all muscle. Uh, over the years, the muscle becomes less. And by 16 years, there's no muscle. There is only fat in the muscles. Uh, there are various treatments for muscular dystrophy, but no definite cure. They are just uh, help symptomatically. We've treated over 1,000 patients. And 85% had a significant, had a improvement. The significant was small, only 4.5%. 
and 15% did not improve. But 85% of our patients showed improvement. Now, you have to remember that in this muscular dystrophy, there's a type called Duchenne muscular dystrophy, where every child, every single child dies by the time they are, um, you know, uh, uh, 25. But with our treatment, we are able to save their lives. So here you can see that uh, a graph. Patients who we treated with stem cells, they stabilized like this. And patients who are untreated continue to deteriorate like this. So there is a big difference between treated and untreated patients. And here you can see before the stem cell therapy, this is all white uh, muscle that's fat. And after the treatment, muscle has come back. Same thing here, before no muscle, afterwards muscle. Also the wave patterns before is called EMG. It is much smaller. After the treatment, it has become much bigger. And we published 18 papers on this subject. And we've written two chapters and textbooks also. Uh, let's just see this child from America. When he came to us, he could hardly, barely crawl. And uh, he had not stood for two years before he came to us. He's from California. And you can see him struggle. But now you can see after stem cell, he's able to stand. He had not stood for two years before. And then from standing, slowly he started walking. You can see little, little baby steps. But you have to imagine that this, he had not stood for two years before. Now you can see that he's able to take steps, but with a very heavy walker. And here you can see that even without the walker, he is walking, uh, just holding the... And now he's walking without any help. But indoors, and here you can see, he is walking without any help outside. But more important than giving him movement, we have saved his life. Because if we had not treated him, this child would die. So in muscular dystrophy, we save their lives. Uh, stem cell therapy also helps an intellectual disability. Earlier, this was called mental retardation, but now we don't use that word. And uh, here you can see the damage in, men in uh, intellectual disability. Is a little lighter blue? And these are our results in over two, almost 250 patients. 84% uh, of the patients had improvement, 20% significant, 15 did not improve. So these are our results. With must, and, and you can see all their symptoms, whether it's cognition, memory, problem solving, social inhibition, toilet training, all the symptoms showed a significant improvement. And this is a scan that's showing before and after. You can see the blue is all gone, before and after. So our stem cell therapy fixes this damage and makes the brain normal. In Down syndrome too, Down syndrome is a syndrome where they have problems with the brain, but they also have problems with the heart and GI, etc. And here you can see before, you can see it's less and afterwards, it's full of life. It's become robust. So stem cell therapy improves the brain in children with autism. In spinal cord injury, the people have a, either they fall from a height or have a road traffic accident, they fracture their spine. And uh, here in over 300 patients, we saw 24% had a significant improvement, 56% moderate, 15% mild, and 3% did not improve. So uh, almost 96% of the patients improved. And in the improvements, their tightness, their sensation, bladder sensation, trunk control, all these improved in this percentage. And we have five scientific papers. Uh, So here's the soldier who came to us. He was totally paralyzed. You can see he was bedridden when he came to us. He could not even sit, uh, forget standing and walking. He was in such poor shape. And after the treatment, you can see. So this was a soldier in the Indian Army. He was a captain when he was uh, uh, in operation. He was shot by terrorists. And the bullet went through his spine and paralyzed him. And for quite some time, for two, two three years before, he was going here and there and no improvement in his power. And then he came to us and we treated him with stem cell therapy. And when this young man, I remember when I met him the first time, I asked him what his expectation was. And he didn't say, I want to get better, I want to marry. He said, Doc, make me strong enough so I can get a gun in my hand and go and kill more terrorists. He wanted to get better because he wanted to go back and fight more terrorists. And we kept our promise. 
uh, within two years, he improved so much that he could join the army back. It's not often that the army takes people who are paralyzed. But in his case, he was taken back because he improved to that point. And you can see all his improvements from not being able to sit also to being able to, uh, you know, transfer. And here you can see he's standing, but there is with support at the back. And slowly you will see that even this goes away and he will start walking. You can see there. There he's walking now. And slowly, even without this, he's able to walk quite satisfactorily. So we were able to get him to his feet and he joined back the army. In fact, he won the bronze medal in the national uh, shooting championships, uh, pre-nationals, and he did pretty well. So just last one or two things in brain stroke, people, older people have a brain attack in which one half of their body gets paralyzed. And here you can see 90% uh, of our patients improved. 51 had significant improvement. 3% um, did not. So these are people who are paralyzed on one side. One half of their body is totally paralyzed. And with our stem cell therapy, we are able to help them. And here's a scan that shows before. You can see before the damage and afterwards, the damage is gone. Uh, we have published five papers on this. Uh, so I'll just run through because not many of you may be interested in head injury. Uh, we have patients who have road traffic accidents and they go into a coma. Uh, here again, we had 29% significant, 5% didn't improve. So about 95% of our patients improved. You can see the damage before and you can see afterwards. The damage is gone. And uh, just to show you this video, now here was this person you can see before. He was in a vegetative state almost. Uh, un, you know, like no response. He doesn't recognize. He cannot talk to you. We call it vegetative state. And now see after the treatment. He's looking at you. He's smiling. He's responding. So big difference between before and after. And uh, earlier he had all this, you know, and now you can see he's sitting nicely. And um, earlier it was difficult for him to sit. Now you can see he's sitting all by himself. And earlier, see this right hand was totally paralyzed, no movement. And now he's actually with this right hand, he is moving. You can see the he's lifting that hand, which was totally paralyzed. He's able to eat himself and swallow food, which earlier he could not do. And, you know, he could tell you numbers. And most important in today's time, he's able to actually use a mobile. So from a state where he was totally dependent to being able to use a mobile phone. Uh, and the last thing, motor neuron disease, this is a disease where 90% of the people die within, um, uh, you know, within five years. And uh, it's progressive. And this is a comparison. If you don't, untreated patients deteriorated like this. And treated patients, they stabilize like that, treated with stem cell therapy. So you can see the difference between treated patients and untreated patients. And this is our paper published in the American Journal of Stem Cells. This is a paper where we compared treated versus un untreated. This is called a control study. Now, I'm sure in your mind one question must be going on. Okay, so stem cell is all this good and everything else. But is it safe? Because the first thing as mothers or as fathers in your mind, the first question is there should be no risk to my child. Nothing should go wrong with my child. So here I want to tell you that we have had, if you see this, we've had no major adverse event or complications because of stem cells. We've had no neurological deterioration because of stem cells. So stem cells themselves have not caused any major adverse event or complication or deterioration. There have been some minor problems. For example, we now have 3% of our patients who already have fits. Now this is only for children who have epilepsy or fits. There is a possibility in only 3% that the fits may increase in the first two months after stem cell therapy. In those who have not had fits, the risk is zero. So this is a small risk, but this is treatable. Should this happen, we can give a medicine and control it. Then 10% of our patients have a headache. This headache comes on after the stem cell therapy. It's called spinal headache. Uh, it's a peculiar headache because it goes away when you lie down. Only when you sit up, it is there. So patients then tend to sleep for the first two, three days, those who have this. But this is one, this is not a complication of the stem cell. This is the complication of the spinal tap. And a few may have nausea, vomiting, local pain, etc. But these are all reversible. So minor is something which is reversible. Major is something which is non-reversible. So I can say to you confidently, because I've now done over 7,000 patients, almost 7,500 now, that stem cell therapy cannot and will not 
cause any significant major irreversible neurological or other complication side effect risk or complication you have my personal assurance in fact my personal guarantee on that so again a very safe treatment no major risks or side effects so my conclusion is that stem cell therapy adult stem cell therapy i repeat not embryonic we don't do embryonic stem cell therapy adult stem cell therapy may be considered to be safe and effective treatment for autism for cerebral palsy and for many other pediatric and neurological conditions for which there is no other treatment option so this is the institute uh, where i work uh, the neurogen brain and spine institute i'm talking to you from here this is neurogen uh, this is a hospital set up for this purpose only we don't do any other work here we only treat patients with various incurable neurological conditions in children we treat autism cerebral palsy downs intellectual disability in adults we treat stroke spinal cord injury uh, als etc so, with a combination of stem cell therapy and rehab so uh, we have treated now over 7000 patients from 65 countries from 65 different countries from across the world Patients have come to our institute. Uh, this is our infrastructure. So you can see we have, uh, because I'm a surgeon, I must have a top class operating facility. So we have a state of the art operation. We have the world's, according to me, among the world's finest equipped stem cell laboratory. We have completely the best and the finest equipment because this is the heart of what we do. And so it is very important that uh, we have a very good stem cell lab. Our accommodation is very, very comfortable. It will be like any five-star hotel. So it's uh, very cozy, very comfortable, and all your needs are attended to. Uh, so it's world-class patient care. And uh, we have all rehabilitation under one roof. So stem cell therapy is combined with real rehab. We are sort of the only stem cell therapy center which combines rehab. Most other stem cell therapy centers, they just do stem cells and send you away. We believe in combining it with neuro rehab. So we have a multidisciplinary team that has doctors, nurses, uh, various therapists, etc. Uh, now this is just to give you a glimpse. This, this is our physiotherapy department. Uh, this is our occupational therapy department. Uh, this is our autism child development center. Now this is very special because we realize that our children with autism are not comfortable going to a hospital. They don't like to be in a hospital. They don't like to see doctors. They don't like to see people with white clothes, white coats. So we created a beautiful autism child development center. It's very child friendly. So if earlier children did not want to come for rehab, here's the opposite. When they come here, they don't want to leave. They have to be literally dragged away. So we've made the rehabilitation for these children very child friendly, very much fun. So when they come here, they are enjoying their rehabilitation. It's not something being forced on them. So uh, some of our special facilities include, uh, like I showed you, aquatic therapy. So here, this you can see, this is a specially designed uh, water area. And, uh, you know, this is a therapy that is done inside the water with amazing results, really amazing results. Uh, we have a spine cord injury walking track. Again, this is unique because people who come on a wheelchair, nobody can be on a wheelchair here. Everybody has to walk. So all the people who are paralyzed, they have to walk. So it's called spinal cord injury walking track. And then we have a special uh, SI sensory integration room. This is a room specially designed for children with autism. Uh, we have a, we focus on activities of daily living and work. Uh, we have a speech therapy department. Uh, we have art therapy. We have dance therapy. Now, to help you make the decision, you can either go to our website. Uh, that's www neurogenbsi.com that is n-e-u-r-o-g-e-n-b-s-i.com uh, you can get all the information you want from uh, this uh, website you could email us the email address is there contact at the rate neurogenbsi.com we have a rule every email is replied to within 30 minutes yes 30 minutes you will get an instant reply so please email us uh, you could WhatsApp chat with us. You could audio or video call with us. Um, you could talk, call us at that number, which is written. Uh, or you could set up a Skype interview. Like after this, we are going to do a Skype interview with several of you. But you can actually set it up for a more detailed Skype interview. Mm -hmm. Once you've decided you want to do the stem cell therapy, now we will appoint a coordinator. 
and your coordinator will become your one point of contact and that coordinator will help you uh, with the whole process whether it's visas or coming or staying logistics so you will basically have a one point of contact uh, then uh, what happens during your stay uh, is that uh, you have to arrive on a sunday so we have one day a week arrival only you can't come in the middle of the week sunday Monday, all the evaluation and tests are done. Tuesday is the day for stem cell therapy. And Wednesday to Saturday, we have all the rehabilitation. Saturday evening, you're ready to go home. Now, this is a list of all the diseases we treat. I spoke only about a few, but we can treat all of this with stem cell therapy. Uh, we've, Like I told you, we already published 86 papers. We've also written 14 books. Now, earlier, uh, we used to write books for doctors, stem cell therapy, neurological disorders. But you know what we found? Doctors are not reading our book. Guess who was reading the books? Yes, you're right. Parents, you were reading our books. So then we said, but these books are very technically difficult. So we used to wonder how parents can go through all this technical stuff. So then we started writing books for parents. So we have a parent guide for autism, parent guide for CP, parent guide for muscular dystrophy, etc. Uh, now all these books are freely available. They, we don't charge anything for them. You could download them from our website. You could just write and order them and we'll courier it you at no extra cost. So these are available completely free of cost. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, our core team. Uh, apart from myself, uh, we have Dr. Nandini Gokul Chandan and Dr. Prerna Bare, who are our stem cell um, uh, experts uh, with several years of extensive work in the field. They are really world-class experts. And, you know, I don't think you find people like that anywhere in the world with such super expertise. And we are really blessed to have Dr. V.C. Jacob. Dr. V.C. Jacob is 75 years old. Uh, I would say 75 years young because he's so active and fit. And he is India's most respected neuro rehabilitation therapist. There is nobody like him. Uh, he's devoted his whole life to helping uh, people work with paralysis and other neurological problems. And we are very fortunate that he heads our entire rehab facility. We have a whole lot of rehabilitation therapists. Now we have almost 40, I think more than 40 therapists to work with the kids, but he, he supervises the whole program. Uh, Dr. Himangi Sani is unique. She's a very dear and very special colleague. She had done her MD from uh, New York University in America. So yes, she got a degree in New York. She was a doctor. She was practicing there. When suddenly she developed this disease called motor neuron disease. Uh, in America, it is called ALS. Like I told you earlier, this disease, 90% of the people die within five years. In America, she went to the best. She went to John Hopkins. She went to the best people in, the, in America. And everybody told her one thing, that she's going to die within three to five years. And she was told to just go and sort her affairs. They said, we can't help you. But she didn't give up. She came to India. She came to us. She came to me. And uh, I gave her stem cell therapy. And she improved. And, you know, instead of deteriorating, so in America, the best doctors in America told her that she's going to die within three years. She came to India. I treated her and she's not only living, she's well, she's alive. She's the head of our research facility. She's our chief medical consultant and she looks after all the medical problems of the patients. Now, here's something interesting. You know, all the people who were diagnosed with her at that time in America, you know, all those people are dead. Those people who, who were diagnosed with this, who were in America, they all died. She came to India. She took stem cell therapy. She is alive and well. Okay. So that's the difference of stem cell therapy. You can actually give life in diseases where there is no cure. So um, uh, we believe a lot in quality. So we have a lot of accreditation. So our laboratory is good laboratory practice certified and good manufacturing practice certified. We have an ISO certification. Uh, we are also have this accreditation from uh, the European Medical Association, the EMA, for best medical practice. So we have a European Medical Association certification for best medical practice, which has been given to um, us at the origin. Uh, there are several awards we received, like this uh, Socrates Nomination Committee from Oxford, uh, where we got the Rose of Paracelsus Award, which is a... a distinct honor uh, and a real privilege to get this prestigious award. Uh, also in uh, the European Society for Quality Research, uh, just recently in, um, um, you know, a few months ago in uh, April 2018, 
uh, awarded us with uh, the European Award for Best Practices. So this is again a unique award coming from a European society. Uh, we were awarded the best stem cell therapy center in India way back in 2016 at the National Healthcare Excellence Awards. Uh, we were got the best uh, stem cell therapy center in our state. Uh, this is the chief minister and he is giving the award uh, to myself and Dr. Nandini uh, at the Healthcare Excellence Awards. And of course, there are numerous other awards, uh, best hospital from Dubai, inspirational company, um, so there are numerous awards which keep coming when you do work, awards like this keep on coming. Uh, I'd like to end with this quote from Mahatma Gandhi who said, to believe that what has not occurred in history will not occur at all is to argue disbelief in the dignity of man. What he was saying was, just because something has never happened before, does it mean it can't happen again? Prior to Mahatma Gandhi, all the countries which were colonized had to fight for their independence. There were wars and there was bloodshed and people had to get freedom through violence. But with our, uh, you know, with Mahatma Gandhi, he said, we will get freedom, but by non-violent means. It had never happened before, but he managed to get it. And so we like, so basically what he's saying is just because something has not happened before doesn't mean it will never happen. So just because earlier autism was not treatable doesn't mean it cannot be treatable now. It can be treated. Scientists believe these tiny cells may have the potential to help us understand and possibly cure some of our most devastating diseases and conditions. To regenerate the severed spinal cord and lift someone from a wheelchair. To spur insulin production and spare a child from a lifetime of needs. To treat Parkinson's, cancer, heart disease, and others that affect millions of Americans and the people who love them. Today, with the executive order I am about to sign, we will bring the change that so many scientists, and researchers, and doctors, and innovators, and patients, and loved ones have hoped for and fought for these past eight years. We will lift the ban on federal funding for promising embryonic stem cell research. line in the work of science. The race is always with us. The urgent work of giving substance to hope and answering those many bedside prayers. I'm seeking a day when words like terminal, curable, are potentially retired from our vocabulary. So I showed you that to show you that the leaders of the world's two biggest democracies, you heard the Prime Minister of India talk about stem cell therapy in Indian Parliament. And here you can see President Obama talking about stem cell therapy, uh, you know, in his uh, at the White House. So the leaders of two world's biggest democracies are talking about stem cell therapy. So uh, with that, I'd like to end my presentation. I thank you for your attention. I hope that uh, during this presentation, I could shift you from the state of hopelessness to one of hope. I hope that I was able to convincingly show you that the damage in the brains of child with autism is reversible and that we can cure or treat several of these children and give them partial and sometimes even complete relief. So thank you very much once again. Namaste.